Oops, hello and welcome to Ionic Bonding. The first thing you need to know is that an ionic bond is the electrostatic attraction that forms between oppositely charged ions. Remember in GCSC when we said that um when we said that metals in groups one, two and three they lose electrons to form a positive and um, to form a positive ion. This is a positive ion and the ones on the end like five six or seven they gain electrons and so they become negative ions those are oppositely charged so they join together like magnets and then they just join together isn't that so simple and all you need to know is that groups one two and three they lose electrons to form the previous octate state to see um the octet state sorry or the previous noble gas basically and this goes to the next octate state which is quite a bit of common sense or to the next um, to the next noble gas they want to become a noble gas that's that's their aim in life that's what at um, that's what atoms aim in life is to get to an octet state that's like they've won the lottery for them Group four doesn't really um doesn't really um what's it take in or remove um gain or lose electrons because it takes too much energy and they can't be bothered. But they can do either depending on the situation. So if I asked, say, um if I wanted to bond magnesium and chlorine, you've also you've all heard of magnesium chloride. What you do is you look at the periodic table which is over here from um, ptable.com which is a very good website, you should use it um, what you should do, you should find magnesium, Mg, which is in group 2 so therefore it would have two uh, it will have two electrons on its outer shell and you'll want to get rid of that it will have two electrons on its outer shell and chlorine um, has got seven on this outer shell and it would and it would want one of them so what you do is you draw the magnesium like this in brackets in square brackets you draw mg and they would only want you to draw the last shell so what you do is you can either leave it blank because that is technically how the shell would look like if it lost two electrons or you can draw them one two three four five six seven eight like that is either eight or nothing remember that it's either eight or nothing and then oops you'd have to do you'd, ha you'd have to write two plus because it has lost two electrons so therefore the charge is positive now it's got two electrons to give away and chlorine only needs one so one electron from magnesium will go onto chlorine and another one will go onto another chlorine so that means you would need two chlorine atoms so if we have another bracket which has a Cl here and we have we use dots this time to represent um, a different element one two three four five six oops five six seven eight so one of them has moved over here and one of them has moved on to another chlorine atom that's why it's MgCl2 so we have one two three four five six seven eight with the one here okay you can see these are the two electrons that magnesium has lost so then after that oops we'd have to write minus minus or one minus if you really want to it doesn't really matter and as I said atoms want to reach an octet state that means they want to reach a point where there are eight electrons on this outer shell that's their dream a giant a giant ionic lattice what happens is that these two um, would join together. I should have done something easier. Okay, let's go with um, sodium and chlorine. They all join together. So you have C, 
oops, NA and CL. They all join together, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of them, into a 3D um, structure like that. And that is just basically what a giant, giant ionic lattice is. It's just a, um, a 3D structure of oppositely charged ions. Remember, this one was positive 2 plus and this one was negative. And there were two of the. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 sorry. That's just um, one plus. Um, and they were held together by strong ionic bonds. Hmm. Okay. Yes, sorry, yeah, it is one plus. So moving on, to predict an ionic formula, all you need is the um, periodic table. So if we have calcium hydroxide, okay, calcium hydroxide, calcium's over here and it's in group two. So it has two electrons on its outer shell and it is going to lose two electrons. So its state, um, its charge is going to be two plus. Yes, because it's lost two electrons. So it's overpowered by two protons. The um, hydroxide, you need to remember this. It will not be written down anywhere for you in the exam. But you need to remember that hydroxide is OH minus. You need to remember that. Okay? And that's all you need to... Um, uh, what's it? Yeah. That's all you need to remember. So we have CA, which, uh, um, which has two electrons to spare. And we've got a hydroxide ion, which needs one electron. So that means we need two hydroxide ions. We need two of them so that one electron can go here and one electron can go here. So the answer will be CaOH2. And that's basically it. We can't, again, we can't write OH2 like that because that means there's two hydrogens. So it's OH2. And that's how you need to predict the formula of the ions. Well, that's it. Thank you for listening to Ionic Bonding.